There was an article at The Athletic. Andy Staples and Stuart Mandel worked on it along with Nicole Auerbach. She handled some of the interviews, all that kind of stuff. They talked to athletic directors throughout college football. Remember, there's 130 teams in Division I college football. There are 10 different conferences. There are a bunch of independent athletic directors, etc. And a lot of these league commissioners discussed the possibility, uh, one, that a lot of them are not going to be ready to play in the fall. Like at the, the Pac-12, Larry Scott is very prevalent in this article, and he discusses the fact that four of his six states are still completely locked down right now. Now, obviously, in Mississippi, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, etc., cetera, uh, they are, bless you, Chris, got you there. <laughs> but uh, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, you know, et cetera, all in the southeast are, are open for business. Now, there are a few restrictions in place, obviously, uh, but everybody's starting to go about things as normal somewhat, right? The plan, I mean, uh, Arkansas AD Hunter Yurichich came out yesterday and said, look, we are going to be playing football in September, period. Now, he is not really the person that gets to make that call. Obviously, you need opponents if you're going to be playing, but it, he's saying that his program is going to be ready to go. I, it, obviously, you can make all the jokes about, you know, the CFP doesn't really need the Pac-12 anyway. Like, what have they ever done in the in the playoff? You can make those jokes, right? But there are some teams in conferences that are not going to be able to play. Take the American, for example. You've got teams all the way from Pennsylvania to Texas. Uh, the teams in Pennsylvania may not be able to to play come September. One of the main themes of this article is that there are going to be some teams that will only get to play, you know, four or five games this season. Uh, how are you going to go about doing bowl games? How are you going to go about deciding on a playoff participant? That is going to be insane to try and figure out. And I think, it maybe Chris, you can tell me if I'm wrong, I think it may make this sport even more entertaining and even more crazy because it's already absurd as it is. There's no way to judge the strength of different schedules, etc., with 130 different teams that don't play anywhere near the same schedule, so you don't really know how good anybody is. Imagine trying to do that with a team that's played 12 games against a team that's played four games or five games and trying to tell who is better. Like, Tell, tell me your thoughts on this. Yeah, no, you're just not going to be able to get to do that. The First thing first, the schools that the states that are locked down and the governors have locked them down for perpetuity, those can all be changed. Those governors can wake up tomorrow and say, uh, my bad, my bad. We're okay. We think things are better and we're going to open up. We've seen everybody else open up and they haven't any problems. I think it's okay. So, so that doesn't just because they say that they've been locked down because I, I feel like a lot of the governors started out doing a lot of good things. And then it became a dick measuring contest where I love my people more than you love your people. And so I'm going to do, you know, make it extreme. I, I don't, I don't think those things are real. If they see everybody else is functioning normally and this thing has kind of for the big picture been beaten, then they're going to open up as well. They have to. They have no yeah. choice. They'll get their elected officials. They'll get voted out. They'll lose their job um, if, if they don't. And uh, and so I think I think those things will happen. So I don't think that's a concern. If all of these states that have opened up open up, and we fall right back into it, and we just made it way worse than it already was, then those states are going to know, and everything's set back again, and we got to play some different hypothetical game. Yeah. All of this is hypothetical, by the way. YouTube. That's right. Because we, we, we don't know. No. Going no. forward with that, I don't think we're going to have certain teams play four games and certain teams play 12. I just don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. I think we could, you know, maybe have a team get 10 games in and a team get 12. And that I could see that. Um, I could see a team get eight games in and another team get, get 10. You know, yeah, I, yeah. Like, something, of, something of that nature I could see. We're not going to have the difference between four and 12. I one of, the, one of the other things that's brought up, by the way, is the idea that it, the reason I say four is because you could reasonably start out, say 
say you've got to miss the first two weeks of the season because of whatever lockdown, you know, and you you got to get your team ready, right? So you've had to reschedule all these games. Well, then you come back, you play a couple of games, and then somebody on your team ends up with the virus, test okay. positive for it, and then you have to quarantine, and then you got to cancel two games, and then you got to come. All so right. Oh, yeah, that, that, made, kind of okay, now that that makes sense. That that's the only way you would get. That's right. Okay. Right. Now that is the situation in where you would get four games in. If somebody catches it and they say, "All right, we're quarantining the whole team. Y'all can't play anymore um, for two weeks." It, this season is just always going to have an asterisk by it. It's going to yeah. be interesting. It's going to be weird. I don't know that it's going to be crazier. Like chaos wise, it's going to be different than seasons beforehand. But I don't know that that makes it better. Like I don't find chaos for chaos sake to be entertaining i also don't find chaos for chaos sake just to be interesting either i Um, I think in certain situations it is because the fact that they are even going to try and have a season under these circumstances it, it shows you exactly how important and how financially big the sport of college football really is i mean it drives everything with these universities at least with their athletic programs uh, let me let me get to some of these YouTube comments right quick. Matt jumped in. He said, how many teams are going to claim a national championship this year? Yeah, that, that's going to be a lot, oh, I would oh, imagine. Oh, oh, oh. Um, he said, Boise State, UCF, Utah, Tennessee will all claim a title based off of five games. Uh, well, you left the biggest one out. Alabama's going to claim a national title no oh, matter how who they play or how, what happens. 100%. 100%. This is happening. They, uh, they've claimed more than anybody else. So, you know, they they have claimed more than anybody else in seasons where – they, without question, are not close, and the Alabama Tribune named them national titles. That was so a, back in got, the 40s, man. Come on, give, me, give them a break. Gary's got give a T-shirt break. that claims it. <laughs> Jim John on YouTube said, I like Temple, but I'm not willing to lose a season because of them. I think a lot of people feel that way, and I think that's what the SEC is doing right now. The SEC looks and says, all of our states are open. Our numbers are down. Yeah. We can go on and play. So if we have to, we will play in conference if we have to. It's one of the greatest things about our country is that we don't all have to live the exact same life, okay? I assure you, people in Mississippi live a lot different than people in California and New York. And I know that a lot of people here think that the people in California and New York live wrongly. And those people think we live wrongly. And reasonable people, like you and I, Gary, don't think either one of them are wrong. We just see have different values and different things. Yes. And and so one of the beautiful things about the way our country is, as big as it is, is if something's affecting one state, that doesn't mean it has to affect all of us. Yeah, agreed. We can we can move on with our lives and still understand there's this thing out there that we got to be cautious of. But for some reason, I, I don't pretend to know the sciences. It's just not hurting us. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I agree. Matt jumps I in. was very much worried about the South because we don't live on top of one another the way these other states do because we're so spread out. But it, it affects obese people. Mississippi is the most obese. We have yeah. the worst health care in the state in, in in the country. Like like all of these things were the worst at that scare me to death about this thing. And it just really didn't hit hard here. No. It sure we were didn't. the last state to lock down. Well, it's, it's partly because, like you said, we don't live on top of each other. So yeah. if you're not around a whole lot of people, it's kind of hard to get it. I realistically know? think the six-foot rule is a big deal because I've gone most of my life, and I've spent most of that life as an extrovert around a lot of other people, and I don't know that aside from the people I'm with going to places, I don't know that anybody is closer than six feet around one another. I mean, unless you're going to concerts or, or ball games. Yeah, I when mean, you go to crowded event things, that's that's, that's really about it. the only time you are. So. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Uh, McKinnon jumped in. Hey, fellas, McKinnon, good to have you back in. Of course, Matt said uh, Alabama was founded in 1831, and they claimed the 1829 and 1830 national championships. Uh, he said they do live wrong up there. They make salsa in New York City, and then he said that you can fight it with all the meth. So. Uh, <laughs> You always enjoy Matt bringing the uh, the humor into all of this. Uh, I am curious to see what they are going to do because I think by the middle of June you're going to have to come up with some some decisions. Uh, you to get the season started on time for anybody, you have to have players back training by July 15th. Uh, that is like a drop dead date, so you got to have that done. And and I think that you know by the middle of June we will see 
exactly what is happening, you know, what direction we're going to go with this. And uh, and I can't wait. I can't wait. I, I, yes, it, not all chaos is entertaining, but I am just insanely interested in the way that the powers that be are going to decide to go with this because there, I don't think there will be any uniformity. I think it is just going to be every man for himself. Everybody's got to try and find a way to get these television contracts so that they can get paid. And, I mean, there's no telling. Uh, Matt, of course, jumps in. He said, I wonder how many ACL and Achilles ruptures are going to happen this year. Probably a lot. Um, and then Michael will jump in. He said, it'll be interesting what Newsom does with the schools in California. Yeah, this. Uh, there, there's so many hypotheticals going around. It is just absolutely bananas. So we're we're talking about hypotheticals for the future. Let's change that up. 